right, so since I'm taking this Dodge pickup, which is a 1996 OBD2 truck, and I'm swapping it back to the running gear out of my 94, which is an OBD1 truck, I'm gonna go over some of the differences in these engines. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever gonna find this video handy in any way, but maybe a guy with an early truck ends up finding a good engine out of a later truck and wants to swap it over and needs to know what changes. Or opposite, guy with a newer truck finds he needs an engine, but he finds a good used engine out of a 94 5. This is who I'm aiming towards this, this video. Um, there is not a lot of changes in these engines over the years. So these 488 cubic inch V10s were built from 1994 until 2003. They spanned two different body styles of truck. Uh, 2002 and 2003, there was a limited number of third gen pickups that got the V10 platform. Um, I haven't done any work on those before. I've only ever seen pictures of two of them, so I don't know how much of this is gonna cross over, but I don't have any reason to believe that Dodge would change major things on a drivetrain package, such as an engine, going from one body style to the next, especially for how little they didn't change in the second gen bodies. And this is like all of them, whether it was a half ton V6, if it was a two wheel drive or four wheel drive V8, 318 or 360, or even if it was a Cummins truck, or if it was another V10. The bodies are all the same. They can all take the different drivetrain packages wiring wise. The only difference is that I have come across from OBD1 to OBD2, I'm just gonna brief overview it here. Basically, they run a different O2 sensor for the two different generations of computers. They have a different cam position sensor they have um, on the 94.5 OBD1 trucks, they have an EGR valve, while all of the later trucks do not have an EGR valve. By the way, neither one has a PCB system, they just have a crankcase vent system. Um, obviously, the ECM and the wire harness itself, those are the only differences from OBD1 to OBD2 between all of the V10s. The only other difference I'm aware of is in, and we'll, we'll get into this in a minute, some of the downsides of this engine. Um, in 2001 through 2003, they upgraded the rocker bolts from what all the earlier trucks were as a 5 16 bolt, they upgraded it to a 3 8 um, which, I mean, it, <clears throat> it makes sense once you'll see the failure here in a minute that these are somewhat known for. Um, that I've now experienced in my truck twice, one of the reasons that I have an engine I'm swapping right now. Uh, but other than that, heads, valve covers, intake manifolds, upper and lowers, water pumps, uh, oil filter, oil pressure sensor, crank position sensor, all the vacuum lines, all the injectors, um, exhaust manifolds, other than EGR, but we'll get into that in a minute as well. Um, your balancer, your timing cover, your oil pan, every last single component on these V10s is all interchangeable between OBD1, 1994, all the way up until the third generation OBD2 trucks into 2003. Now let's go over a couple of the things that you can actually physically see the difference in how you may identify, let's say if you found this engine sitting in a wrecking yard, what generation of truck it came out of, if it was OBD1 or OBD2. So this is the engine out of my 1994. The first thing we're gonna look at right here, we have our EGR valve. You can see two bolt holes right here. There is a passage underneath that connects right here. And this passage also goes up into the upper plenum. There's also a port right here where your EGR tube threads in, comes back down and around and bolts down in place on the exhaust manifold. So obviously two bolt holes here and a through passage. This is the 1994 OBD-1. So we're gonna walk over here, take a look at the 96 engine. You can see there are no bolt holes and there's no carbon in this passage, but there is here. So this passageway in between is not milled out. That is the only difference on the intake manifold. And that's why this intake manifold would take a little bit of a careful work to make it usable on a first gen pickup and run an EGR valve. Also, you can see there's no port right here for the tube to plug into. 
So that would have to be modified. Now, as far as the exhaust manifold goes, the actual mount is cast because these are obviously cast iron manifolds. So this manifold could, essentially you could take the gasket, set it down in here, mark out the holes, drill and tap the outside too, and drill the inside one because the passage does go all the way up in here. It was just never milled off on the top. Back over to the 94. Cam position sensor is located right here on the front of the timing cover. Single retaining bolt, and this is a pigtail with your connector. Now we're gonna go back over here. On the 96, there is no pigtail. It does still use the same retaining bolt, which means that the timing covers are interchangeable between OBD1 and OBD2, but the sensor must be changed, and obviously the associated wire harness. Of course, as I said, the O2 sensors, which are in each head pipe, depending on you know what emission spec your truck is, this one is uh, federal emissions instead of California, so it only has two O2 sensors, one in each head pipe, pre-cat. My 94 outside is also federal emissions, so it has two O2 sensors, pre-cat. So they're both in the head pipe, same location, but a different O2 sensor. So you just swap those out to interchange between the when two. When you're looking at the trucks themselves, the easiest way to tell if it's an OBD1 or OBD2, even if the engine isn't in it, you know, say you came across this in a wrecking yard, if you see this ECM, single connector, black box, this is OBD1. If you see silver ECM, three plugs, that is OBD2. The mount on the firewall is exactly the same. So this ECM will bolt right in place of that one or vice versa. Basically everything else on these engines is identical. They use the same starter. They use the same air intake temperature sensor. They use the same crankshaft position sensor. They use the same oil pressure sensor. Both generation of trucks use the same coil packs with the same connectors. Fuel injectors are all the same between both generations. Both generations, same location on the upper intake plenum. The manifold absolute pressure sensor is identical and the same. Both generations of trucks have two temperature sensors on the thermostat housing. The back one is coolant engine coolant temperature sensor, ECT, for the PCM. The front one is engine coolant temperature sensor for the gauge. Alternators, all the same connections, complete interchange between both trucks. Cruise control servos, same connection between both trucks. They interchange. On the throttle body, two sensors that are on it, throttle position sensor is exactly the same between both trucks. They will interchange. And your idle air control, they are both the same. Throttle bodies complete can swap generation to generation. And if you find one of these engines and the valve covers off and you can't find any other identifying characteristics, a 5 16 bolt in the rocker is going to be either OBD1 or OBD2, uh, but it will be a pre-2001 engine. If the bolt is a 3 8 then it's a 2001 to 2003 generation. As far as the failure I was talking about, you see how this bolt is nice and shiny and new, but those ones are nasty as hell. That's because these engines have a bit of a problem with sludging. And you can see in this engine, see all the buildup sitting below the head bolts? All that grime. And this oil right here, it is unbelievably thick sludge tar nastiness. If you don't maintain these engines, because they don't have a PCB system, that is my suspect of why they do this, they will sludge. On the Dodge Magnum engines, they use the combination roller and hydraulic lifter assembly. They've got a very small oil well inside of them. If it gets any sludge in it, it can't compress, keeping your rocker assemblies within spec. And what will happen is it will either, like this one here did, it will break off the rocker bolt, and then you have to extract it out of the head. It could possibly break the valve spring. It could possibly bend a push rod. But in my experience, the most common thing is it's going to break off that bolt. Like that one. As I suspected when I pulled this engine out, what I was going to find. There's the bolt broken off. There's a chunk of the head still on it. You can see right around the boss, broken part of the head. But that bolt is under no tension, and because it's surrounded in oil its entire life, it'll spin right out of there. 
you can replace the bolt. But this is the only sucky thing I have found about these engines. Ooh, and that push rod is jammed in there. So, yep, yeah, that's why this engine had to come out and it's gonna be at a later date completely gone through and rebuilt. And finally, if you are lucky enough to find an engine that is somewhat complete with the front end accessories on it and it still has the air injection pump bracket, you can read your catalyst tag and that's going to tell you what year this truck is certified emissions to. This one 1996 model year this one 1995 model year that will tell you that this is an obd1 truck this is an obd2 truck by the way these brackets air pumps tensioners pulleys all the same all interchanges so if there's anybody out there that's ever working on one of these things maybe you're sitting in a wrecking yard you're trying to id an engine or maybe even you don't know if your truck has obd1 or obd2 that you bought Hopefully these little keys and things I've shown you will be able to help you identify which generation of engine you have, or maybe even what parts you might need for that engine. Maybe you even found this video just trying to figure out where the sensors are at, because I showed everything that's on the engine other than the purge valve, which bolts right over here. Uh, it sits kind of in between the upper and lower plenum, so I didn't bother showing that. So I hope that helps somebody out. Thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you next time.